Hey guys, welcome back to Comigan. Today on the show, we're going to be taking a look at Batman Shadow, numbers one and two of six. From the incredible minds of iconic authors Scott Snyder and Steve Orlando comes the resurgence of a classic noir character. The Shadow was a major influence of the Batman himself, and now appears in this incredible six-issue crossover event. While investigating the murder of a Gothamite, Batman identifies his prime suspect as Lamont Cranston. But there are two problems with that one. One, Batman is not aware Lamont's alter ego is the master detective known as the Shadow. Two, and more importantly, Cranston seems to have died over half a century ago. But that's not all either. The Shadow plays a series of mind games with Batman that reach all the way back to Bruce Wayne's original training to become the savior of Gotham. Was the Shadow Batman's teacher all this time? Only the Shadow knows. It's not that far-fetched. Since the Shadow debuted in Detective Story Hour radio show on July 31st, 1930, and in print for the first time in The Living Shadow on April 1st, 1931, while Batman made his debut appearance in Detective Comics number 27, in March of 1939. The rights to The Shadow are currently licensed by Dynamite Entertainment and has been since August 2011. I have to say, so far, all the Shadow stories I've read from Dynamite have been great. If you want to learn more about the mysterious vigilante detective known as The Shadow, keep an eye out for our episode on The Shadow and our review of The Shadow Now, coming soon to Come Again TV where all geek culture collides. Issues one and two are currently in comic book shops as well as on Comixology. But if you wanna wait for the trade paperback or hardcover, it'll be in stores November 28th, 2017, and we'll collect Batman the Shadow numbers one through six and stories from Batman Annual number one and Detective Comics number 253 and 259. With that being said, let's get into the review on issues one and two. Issue number one opens with Bruce Wayne at the top of the French Alps to seek help from his former teacher, Henry Ducard, the world's greatest manhunter. Bruce admits that Ducard's teachings have helped him for years in solving mysteries, but that he's finally uncovered a case even he, the world's greatest detective, cannot solve. The violent murder of a man well-loved in Gotham, a man who treated the inmates of Arkham with respect and earned their respect in return. A man who's been honored by the city of Gotham for his service. A man who's not wealthy by any means. 33 years old. Type O negative blood. Food service employee at Arkham Asylum. Foster parent to rescue dogs. Name, Lamont Cranston. Out of nowhere, as Batman investigates the murder scene, laughter pierces his solitude from out of the shadows. But how? Batman cased the scene himself. The only ones there were the police. After a fairly quick battle on the rooftop, the individual involved is revealed to be none other than the Shadow. Through Batman's research and investigation, he discovers the identity of the Shadow as being that of Lamont Cranston. But how can that be? Lamont Cranston is dead. Batman saw the body himself. Not that Lamont Cranston, but another Lamont Cranston. This Cranston was born in 1900 and died of cancer in 1963. Batman visits known associates of Cranston. Mr. Vincent, whom the Shadow had stopped from committing suicide and held it over his head for 50 years. Clyde Burke, a reporter who knew Cranston was a Shadow but had no proof to do a story on it. The grave of Cliff Marsland, a fighter pilot in World War I and the taxi driver for Cranston who died the same year as Cranston. Finally, Batman visits Margot Lane. Margot reveals that Lamont Cranston wasn't the Shadow's only identity, but one of many. Kent Allard, Ying Ko, and so on. She reveals she and all the other agents of his got old, but he didn't. The Shadow's hate kept him young, obsessed with punishing crime, but she hadn't spoken to him since he told all of his agents to start calling him Master. I'll refrain from going any further into the story, as any more will ruin the experience for you. But I will tell you, this is a story of twists and turns, mystery and deception. It seems to take place in the main DC universe, outside of Dynamite Comics universe. I've only managed to read through the first two issues so far. 
as issue number three doesn't come out until June 28th, but I highly recommend this six part storyline. Issue number three should be even more epic as the cover has Batman and the Shadow going up against the clown prince of crime himself, the Joker. Can the Shadow protect Batman from the combined onslaught of the Joker and Stag, as well as the mystical powers of Shambhala? Find out in Batman's Shadow number three from DC Comics. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!